Hello and welcome. In today's class, we'll be looking at one calendar program. And this is just a guess question that might appear in the upcoming IEC computer science exam. So according to the question, we have to write a Java program to generate and display a calendar for a given month and year. Obviously, the user is also going to input the starting day of the month. So suppose that the month is starting from a Saturday. So that data is also provided by the user and then we are going to create a calendar based on that data and we are going to display it on the screen. So to give you a better idea, here is one example. So you can see if the month number is two, that means we are talking about February and the year is 2024. And if the day is starting from a Thursday, then you can see how the calendar appears. The day one starts from a Thursday and then day two Friday, then day three Saturday and so on. Obviously, because 2024 is a leap year, we have 29 days in February. So that also has to, uh, it needs to be considered whether it's a leap year or not. Another example, if the month number is three, that means March, year is 2025 and the first day was a Saturday. Then as you can see, the calendar is displayed accordingly. So that's the question. Let's start writing a program. So as you can see, I have created a file calendar.java. So let's start with the import statement. Then we create our class calendar. Inside this class, we create our main method. And then we create the scanner object. Next, we need to enter the month, or you can say the month number. So system.out.print month number. So I'm taking it in the variable month. It will be an integer. Now, similarly, we also need to enter the year. This will also be an integer. And now we ask for the starting day. So I'm taking it as a string. So string day equals in dot next. Why only next? Because it's only going to be a one word value. And let's convert it into a lowercase. So two lowercase. So that it doesn't matter whether the user enters all in caps or so it will not be case sensitive anymore. Next, we need to store the number of days for each and every month. So I can take an array for that. So let's say m equals. And here we have uh, 31 for January. Then by default, 28 for February, March, April, May. June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. 
once we have entered the year, we need to check whether it's a leap year or not. Because if it's a leap year, then we have to modify this value. From 28, we have to make it 29. So for leap year, I can write a condition. This is very important. Uh, only year mod 4 is not enough to check whether the given year is a leap year or not. So year mod 4 is 0. If that's the case, then at the same time, year should not be divisible by 100. So year mod 100 should not be equal to 0. Otherwise, if the year is divisible by 400, then it's a leap year. So if that's the case, then we are going to modify at index 1 from 28, we make it 29. And now we have all the details with us. Our data is ready with us. So now we need to do our uh, printing and we need to do our processing. So for that, first of all, we can display the heading for our calendar. So in my calendar, I'm starting the day from Sunday. So I can write here a print LN. Sunday, then backslash T, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So with this print statement, our heading is displayed. Now, our starting day was also entered. Okay, so whether the month was starting from a Monday or a Tuesday or a Wednesday. So that was entered in line number 10, that data. So now what we'll do, we will take a variable start and initialize it to zero. And we will put the day, that means the string value inside switch. And here we will have different cases. So if it's a Sunday, then start is going to be zero, break. If it's a Monday, then start equals one, break. Tuesday, start equals to break Wednesday start equals 3 then break so then we have Thursday Start equals four. Friday. Start equals five. And Saturday. Start equals six. Then break. Or even if we don't give break, it's not a problem because this is the last case, so we can ignore it. Because we need to know what's our starting point based on the day entered by the user. And now we take a count, which is set to zero by default. And first of all, we have to shift to the right day or the right day heading. So for that, i equals 1, i less than equal to start because I have to reach start, i plus plus,
each time I have to shift to the right, I use backslash T because I have to shift to the right column because if the uh, day is starting from a Thursday, I have to come I, or I can say I have to bring my cursor under the Thursday column. That's why I am running this loop. So first of all, I'm reaching there. And while I'm going there, I'm also incrementing count. And once I reach that point, now I'll run another loop. I equals to one and I less than equal to the month number minus one means how many days are there in that month. Why I'm uh, writing minus one here? Because if the month is one, it is actually present in index zero. The number of days is actually present in an array. So the first month value is actually present in index zero. The second month value is actually present in index one. That's why we are writing here the month value. Suppose that the month is February. So February is actually two according to the user, but according to our array, it is at index one. So two minus one, we get the right index. All right, and then we increment i. And here, if count mod seven is equal to zero, because we need to know when to move to the next row, we are right now in the first row of printing our calendar and we need to know when to uh, shift to the next row. So each time the value of count is divisible by seven, that means it's time to shift to the next row. So that time we are giving just one empty print again. Otherwise, we are just horizontally printing the dates. So I is the date with a backslash T. And also the count keeps increasing. So next time, suppose first time count becomes seven. So first time it shifts to the next row. Then when count becomes 14, again, it moves to the next row. So that's how it moves to the next row. And our program is complete. So let's save it and check the output. So in the command prompt, we can run the program. And we have an error here. Uh, I think because there is one illegal escape character. So let's check it where we are wrong. Yeah, here. Yeah. So backslash T. Let's save it and try again. Yeah. So it's asking for the month number. Uh, let's take the current value here. I can see in my Windows computer uh, the month of March is actually starting from Saturday. And here also the calendar is starting from Sunday. So the uh, the first day the first day was a Saturday, so we can uh, give the month number as three, year as twenty twenty five, and starting day was a Saturday. It doesn't matter how I type it in caps or in small; it doesn't matter. And then I press enter, and you can see that it is displaying a similar calendar what you just saw over here. Okay. I hope this program is clear to you. So it's just a guess question. And I hope you have understood this program. That's all in this class. All the best for your exam tomorrow. And uh, thank you for watching.